And uh, we're here now for the second part of the afternoon, uh, first part of the afternoon, where we're going to have Gonzalez Robles from Chile. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's going to give us uh, a talk about fungi stop? That's brilliant. Over to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good afternoon, guys. Um, I'm Gonzalo Robles from the Observación uh, Latin America. Um, we are all very excited because uh, it is uh, my turn to present a, a, a new range of products coming from our labs, Crazy Labs. And um, uh, what we are going to talk about is fungi stuff, which is our new range that is, uh, that is aimed for non climacteric produce. So, to start with, let's talk about non climacteric produce. And basically, uh, in common language, is the produce that does not. Oh, yeah. That, that could help. I don't need... We don't have a screen here. Uh, Miriam? Yeah. This, this, this. Well, I'll continue anyway. Oh. Yeah. Some, somebody saw what that you mean? Yeah. Okay. I take that into consideration. It's called sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, as I was saying, uh, basically in, in, in common language, non climacteric produce is known as the one that does not uh, ripen after being harvested. A little bit more technically is, is, uh, is that this uh, kind of produce does not have a spike in their effluent and respiration rates. Um, after being harvested. Before continuing, it's important to talk about maturity and basically three milestones that are normally a uh, part of the game. Um, I'll start with physiological maturity and basically physiological maturity is an objective milestone because it means that uh, the, the organ or the fruit has fully developed. Uh, so that is, this definition goes across Obviously, climacteric, climacteric and non climacteric products. So basically, you cannot commercialize any fruit that hasn't had a uh, passed at least this milestone. Okay? Then you have harvest maturity. And harvest maturity is a an, an subjective milestone because it, 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 it depends on agronomical criteria. Uh, basically, with harvest, uh, with, uh, with harvest maturity, you are taking into consideration that when you harvest the, 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 the organ or fruit, uh, it will be in its optimum uh, maturity by the time it uh, reaches the shelves. So basically it's going to withstand the post-harvest handling plus a shelf life. Um, so based on that, you decide when to harvest. Of course, again, it has to go after this one. Uh, and then the third one is the consumption maturity, and that is when it's ready uh, in, in terms of being fully developed under the, um, uh, for, the, for the end consumer, basically that is ready for consumption. With that in mind, uh, I would like to, for you guys to check the typical life cycle of uh, climacteric products. Basically since their main uh, quality parameters do not evolve after being harvested, the three milestones that I talked about, they they, the three can coincide in the same spot. Uh, <coughs> the only one of the quality parameters that is kind of special is color, and we are going to talk about it later. But all the rest, uh, you have to have physiological maturity, consumption maturity, and, and harvest maturity pretty much in the same spot in order to harvest a, a non climacteric product. So, what is the paradigm with this kind of uh, this kind of products? Oh, I would love to. Sorry, guys. Um, somebody wants to tell a joke or something in the meantime? Eureka! Personal touch. 
it's always good mm -hmm. to know the guy that knows how to do stuff. And so what is the pipeline with the non climacteric uh, produce is that VOCs, including ethylene, uh, their presence is not relevant. It doesn't matter if they are dead. And as we are going to see, that's not the case. What are the effects of uh, VOCs uh, on non climacteric products? Well, first off, ethylene has a big impact on not, not only climacteric produce, but non climacteric produce in the sense that it's associated with senses. And for that matter, the weakening of the peel structure. Once you have weakening of the peel structure, basically you have a more vulnerable fruit or organ. And that is a way in for pathogens, and obviously that uh, has a, a, a negative effect on the commercial value of the product. In general, VOCs, that is ethylene, uh, acetaldehyde, um, ethanol, even CO2, they are considered as a chemical signals. And what does it mean? Basically, pathogens that are already colonizing uh, the, the, the surface of the product are somewhat dormant, waiting for a signal that tells them, okay, the environment is fine for me, it's, it's the perfect environment for me to start doing my job, which is basically destroying everything, or feeding, if you wish. Uh, but precisely when you remove those signals, you can prevent the, the, uh, the colonization or the proliferation of that pathogen that is already there. I mean, uh, normally you, you carry even from field uh, a pathogen load, and that load is going to express only if certain things are in place. For example, a weak skin and some other signals. So, in this sense, there are plenty of studies, and um, I believe that you're going to have this presentation and all the, all the presentations uh, of this seminar. Uh, you are going to see in the notes, I quote several studies, uh, both in, in citrus, in, uh, in, uh, in pineapples, etc., where they have found that relationship. So, talking about specifically one example of non climacteric uh, type of fruit, citrus. Uh, again, talking about the, the, the signals, uh, you see here limonene, acetaldehyde, ethanol, and CO2 uh, stimulates penicillin, for example. And um, uh, also, limonene has been, has been found to even reverse certain properties of certain varieties, like resistance to penicillin again, um, Santomonas bacteria, or even Ceratitis uh, capitata, Mosca de la Fruta, in Espanol. Uh, so, again, the importance here is, is uh, fundamental. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, those are my fat fingers, I don't want to blame anybody. Um, okay, so we have, uh, this is another example uh, of uh, a non climacteric uh, produce, uh, and it's pineapple, and one of the biggest uh, challenges that the industry is facing is precisely the pedantle mold. We are going to talk more about this later on. So another important thing, uh, in terms of quality, looks matter. Here you have some limes. Limes are, by the customer, they are expected to be green. Of course, and this is among us, yellow limes, they taste the same, but they expect it to be green. And so, if you keep them here, you're doing business. You go there, bye-bye. Okay, so this is very important. And again, ethylene is responsible for uh, pigment degradation, and in that sense, it's, it's fundamental again, it's, it's essential to keep, keep it apart. Same, same example in the sense of uh, pineapples. Uh, here, the, 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 the reason is slightly different. Uh, you would like to have, in, in, in all produce actually, you, one of the key um, quality factors is uh, homogeneity. So basically what you would like to have is your whole load with the same color and the right color for commercializing it. So when you have, uh, as you normally happens, when you have harvest, harvested uh, at different times, you have a certain uh, fields with, uh, with a more, um, they have different uh, weather conditions, uh, perhaps a more pathogen load, even even uh, plagues, so on and so on. You have a very uh, a, a wide variety of conditions, and the, th the thing is that uh, you send the whole container of 
pineapples and the, the ones that are with the worst condition uh, are going to mature faster, they're going to ripen faster and they're going to affect the rest. Basically you're going to receive on the other side uh, a whole lot of different stages and you just want all of them in just one. So again, a very important factor to take into consideration. Okay, so this is, this is what we have come up uh, for, um, for uh, combating all these issues that we are seeing. So it's funky stop and basically it is aiming to uh, remove uh, from the equation VOCs and for that matter stopping the development of, of fungi in, uh, in uh, non-climacteric fruit. So it has a quotable effect pretty much. So by, by dealing with ethylene we have a stronger fruit skin, again reducing the, the vulnerability of the fruit we uh, reduce the chemical signals, as I explained before. Since we have filters, and this, this obviously applies to filters, uh, we are taking care of the airborne uh, spores that are in the, in the environment. Of course, what is on already in the, in the surface of the fruit, it is there, and the only way to tackle them is by eliminating the signals. And the last one is uh, prevent, prevent again unwanted color breaks, as is the case with limes, for example, and have homogeneous color turns, as is the case with pineapples. So here's the range of products. We have our F100 uh, function stop filters. You know, you, I'm sure you all know. Uh, physically, they, they resemble our uh, R12 or R8. Uh, F100 filters and basically filters in general they are used when you are sure that the airflow can reach the product and that means that the packaging allows that. Of course the packaging and, and your loading practices and, and many other things but at least you are sure that you are not using any kind of bag or something that really um, isolates the fruit from the environment. Later we have the sachets, same story, uh, we have three and five, uh, three and five grams and basically they are designed, as the other ones, uh, for when you, have, uh, not, when you don't have uh, airflow reaching the product because you are uh, on purpose using some, some packaging that uh, isolates it from the outside. Like, uh, like uh, modified atmosphere bags, microperforated, uh, high humidity bags, etc. Um, of course, when you also have some uh, arguable uh, loading procedures, uh, of, that's another good reason for using this. Sometimes in certain countries, uh, the conditions of the infrastructure in, and also the practices, the processes, are not really refined. And in that case, you, you can um, sort of uh, deal with it by having this in place. And then we have the warehousing solution that basically is our, our, our PP18 fungi, uh, if, if fungi stop models. Uh, and of course our traditional ethical machines. The, the, the novelty here is that uh, our, our models are going to be aftermarket as well, so they, are going to, uh, they may fit uh, equipment manufactured by other companies. And so I'm going very fast, but you're going to have time to, to, to ask some questions to somebody else because I don't know anything. Uh, Funke, stop again. Uh, um, these are examples, so I'm going to use pineapple as, as the main example because we have had uh, an experience with uh, the Costa Rica University um, where they conducted a study and some of the results you're going to see here tomorrow, uh, the formal presentation of that study is going to be done by Ron Wills. But this is uh, some, some figures that are, I'm sure are useful for you. So basically we have several, th there were several treatments, actually eight, but we have treatments uh, we have absolute controls and, and treatments with a control, that means no fungi stop treatment, and then you have other treatments with fungi stop. Uh, the, the, the test uh, or the, 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 the study uh, was, uh, the conditions were 25 days at 7.5 uh, resembling uh, in a cold storage room, and then uh, three days at 18 uh, degrees Celsius uh, simulating shelf life. And what we found after the first 25 days is that uh, the control has five times more pedunculate mold incidence. 
And by the end of the whole trial, uh, the, the uh, bile fully stopped treatments it showed half the, the, mold, uh, the peduncle mold incidence. This is another study that was conducted in citrus where uh, navel oranges were kept at 3.5 Celsius for five weeks, followed again by a shelf life simulation of uh, one week and 20 degrees Celsius. And the ones with the, the bioconservation treatment showed less, 37% uh, less oleoso losses incidence. So what, I'm going to show very quickly some markets opportunities in this particular example, pineapple. Again, uh, this technology is, is applicable for many other, um, many other non climacteric products because of the principles that I already explained. Um, so for example, pineapples, you see, well, Costa Rica takes 60% of the whole uh, uh, export market, which is huge, and then you have the rest. Um, so these these figures are basically uh, 2,250 uh, uh, metric tons and um, per year, and that gives you, gives you more or less uh, an idea of of the business that you may have just next to you. Um, when it comes to import countries, uh, we see here that that um, the the U.S. is one of the key markets, uh, followed by uh, Europe, uh, or perhaps Europe is even bigger if you put them all together. You have to consider that in, in these figures, uh, both uh, Belgium, Netherlands, and, and to some extent also Germany, they are port of entries for for the whole Europe. So it's not that they consume uh, the, the the produce, but they distribute it. Again, these are projections uh, done uh, using the available uh, statistics, and basically we have this. Uh, 2.5 uh, 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 um, million tons per year and uh, basically by the year 2018 we have projected a, a certain <coughs> growth based on the previous growth and you see here well you see there the projection in microchip that we expect to gain with this um, with this uh, new range of products for this particular um, for this particular species now, again, you have um, a range going from, uh, I already mentioned citrus, you have uh, strawberries, uh, you have um, cucumbers, uh, you have uh, uh, bone grenades, etc. There are a wide range of, of, uh, of non climacteric fruit that can be tackled with this. In fact, um, there are some other berries, for example, uh, blueberries. We are, we are researching actively on it because there's an important market and uh, blueberries, despite being climacteric, they are, very, they are kind of a tricky climacteric that behaves almost as a non-climacteric. And again, the opportunities are there, and this, uh, this range of products are aiming uh, this type of uh, species. So once more, um, the idea is that we are going to uh, support you guys uh, uh, with all the, the technical aspects and even commercial aspects in order for you to, to push this, these technologies and to gain more business. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. Uh, I've, I've got a question uh, in terms of um, this using this uh, technology. Uh, can you thereby extend the point of harvest maturity, that you can actually <coughs> harvest later, thereby gather greater sugar content in case of pineapples, for example, and still prevent the fungi from developing. Well, that's totally correct. I mean, that is also our objective with our, our range that is aimed for climate change produce. Basically, what we claim is that by being able to maintain a better condition throughout the, the, the post-harvest handling, basically what you can do is harvest later. And we all know that the trend now is to have a, 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 the longer the fruit on the tree, yes. both climacteric and non-climacteric, because the, the flavors are not only sugar. It's a, it's a, it's a complexity of, of chemical uh, substances that make our flavor, and, and the, the more complex, the richer it is. And so for that matter, uh, if you can have room for 
delaying the, the harvest maturity, you're going to have a, a better problem at the end of the day in uh, facing the, the customer. Because all, all, I, all I remember that when uh, I saw sort of uh, the pineapples being harvested in, cost, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in West Africa, they, they said if you cut them too early, uh, they go acid. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If you by 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 pushing out that time, you reduce the the natural acidification acidification process. Yeah, sure. I'm not. I'm not take. I don't. I don't no, but, but, but you're in the right. You're in the right path. That's that's okay. totally correct. And again, okay. I've understood something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> um, questions from the audience? Uh, I don't know. Please, I would uh, understand uh, which product you are speaking about. Is it a uh, CPV uh, filter or it's another kind of filter? Oh, it's another uh, active matter or inside beyond plus. Uh, it is. It is a uh, sort of an evolution of the CPV. Ah, it's, a new, uh, it's a new, it's a new development, but based on on CPU. Uh, uh, oh, that is that is not my business. It's business of the guy you have just next to you. So <coughs> go after him. But no, I can I cannot talk about the composition because basically it's an industrial formula that is obviously an industrial secret. But but uh, basically the the the, uh, the the composition is something that uh, Oscar can can talk about. <laughs> oh, this is going to replace CPV. Yeah. I just wanted to ask. You said uh, we need okay. to so get the uh, right maturity for harvesting of the fruit. Now, what else do you suggest for measuring the maturity of the fruit on the tree? Because these are not climatic fruits, so they will not ripen after harvesting, right? Yeah, but the 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 as the challenge is, if you're just looking just visually, it is it is very probable you're taking an estimate, rough estimate. It's not uh, optimizing on the maturity index, or what would be the right time to harvest the fruit in the place because that will impact everything else. Well, the, the choosing the right maturity index for any fruit is, is uh, based on uh, their statistic correlation to the end result, basically. So uh, I cannot tell you exactly produce by produce, but in some, uh, formerly, uh, in, in old times, uh, for example, just visual uh, appearance uh, uh, defined the, the, the maturity index, which was proven year after year that in many cases was <coughs> correct. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is that you need to, uh, from a pool of different parameters, you select the ones that have the better correlation with the, the maturity status of the fruit. Uh, in some cases are, is acidity, in some other cases is a combination of acidity and sugar. Uh, in, other, in other cases, color is a good, good, uh, uh, has a good corre uh, correlation. Um, so again, it's variable depending on the species you're talking about. Another question. Um, uh, at the uh, logistics hub conference that I chaired in in, fresh, uh, in Berlin last week, um, we had originally Ron Wills was supposed to speak, and together with a gentleman from Daikin who's going to talk about controlled atmosphere. And in the end, we only had because Ron couldn't come. Um, we had a presentation on controlled atmosphere, and particularly the difference between active and passive control atmosphere and the statement was made at the conference that if you use active control atmosphere you don't really need to have the ethylene scrubbing requirement and I'm just going to throw this I'm going to ask you that question I'm going to throw it to the uh, to the audience uh, to get some reaction because I'd really like to know what the answer is to this I really want to know well um this is um this is a uh, when I when I I've been asked that before, and basically I try to um, use some facts in order to to um, to formulate my answer. Pretty much when uh, as as Paco mentioned before, uh, you have a series of 
uh, a sequence of efforts in order to basically lower down metabolism and for that matter uh, make the product last longer. The first and the foundation, temperature. With temperature alone, you cannot do it. That's why you have this other effort that is controlling the atmosphere in the surroundings of the product. Uh, so with that in consideration, even passive or active controlled atmospheres, they, they both, um, they both, uh, um, they're both based on the same principle. The container is to be <laughs> sealed, hermetically sealed. And what you're doing by temperature and also by, by controlling the, the gas balance is trying to slow down the metabolism as much as possible. The point is that you never stop it. No stop. This is still going on very slowly, but it's yeah. still there, pumping. And then I go back to the definition of uh, a plant hormone, which ethylene is one of them, and in particular ethylene, is that hormones, by the way, for every, every living thing, uh, they are substances that in very, very, very tiny concentrations trigger massive changes in metabolism, or accelerates massively the metabolism. So combine those two things. You have a substance that is producing, uh, on, uh, on top of that, you have an alpha gadolinic effect of ethylene. Ethylene is there, it induces this, the, the organism to produce even more. Let alone that some even some uh, diseases, fungus, they produce even more ethylene yeah. than, the, than, the, than the subject itself. So you have that combination. You have a uh, very tiny production, but it's accumulating there. It's not going anywhere. You have a sealed environment. Yes. It's there. And you need very little to start all these processes, this biological process. So basically, if you don't control by the end of the trip, and also depending on the sensibility of, uh, to ethylene, for example, to, of, of the species you're moving, you can have a big disaster. And that's why, no matter what they say, everyone, in the, in the, um, everyone that is moving their cargo with uh, controlled atmosphere, despite that they're uh, active or passive, they're all controlling ethylene. There's no vendor out there that is not controlling it. They all have their system, they, re they rely on, on, on third parties, or they have their own, but they all put in place whatever they think is, is, is the best, but none of them is just chipping uh, a, a control of the atmosphere without any ethnic control. That's what I can tell you from my... <coughs> yep. Right. Good answer. That's right. I do completely agree. Totally. We all agree. How can you yeah. want some difference, I want some opposition. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where, those techniques are not, uh, Full not proof. opposite, I mean, they are complementary. Yes. You, can, you, can, yeah. you can reach a step forward, yeah. and even a forward, yeah, so by the using it's, uh, more and more techniques, you will completely reduce the, as much as possible the, the yeah. physiological activity of the product. Yeah, but that statement was made at the conference, and I, I wanted to have it counteracted by... You wanted to see blood. But that, that, that's what you wanted. Sorry? You wanted to see blood. <laughs> yeah, because he, he is the moderator. He is the moderator. Yeah. That's his job. Yeah. To confront us. <laughs> no, but you know what? But he's like gravity. Is conflict is my life blood. No, no, no. no. It's like gravity. I mean, there's no way you can you can contradict that. I mean, this yeah, is yeah, science. Yeah, I see that. <coughs> no, I just, I just thought there was... I think there was, well, we had a comment from... Well, I heard the talk from the guy from Daikin. So, yes. Oh, yeah, perhaps you can answer. Yes. I heard the talk from the guy from Daikin, and basically what he was saying was their containers are so airtight and they pressurize them on the inside with nitrogen. So, in theory, that should stop any volatile uh, organics or ethylene from the outside atmosphere getting in to the inside. So, in theory, it should work. But in order to pressurize it, they run a nitrogen generator which takes air from the outside, separates the oxygen and rejects it, filters the air, and then puts the nitrogen into the container. So whether it works or not depends on how efficiently that system can take VOCs out of the air which is taken from the outside atmosphere. And we don't know. Nobody in this room really knows. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm more worried about the, the, uh, the endogenous ethylene than, than the one from the outside is, is of course something to take care of, uh, but but the fruit itself is producing. Producing ethylene. Yes, yeah, it's not an ethylene <coughs> producer. If it's a non climacteric if it's sensitive but not a producer. But they do, and especially the thing is, one other important thing with all these kind of technologies is that basically 
the, well, everybody in this industry tends to forget that all these, in the, these technologies are really not meant for the healthy, uh, hard as a stone fruit. They are meant for, for real conditions where you have a wide range of, of condition and where you have problems, actually. I, I used to work in the, in the cold chain business, and um, I'd like to, to, to analyze thousands of shipments, because that was my job, thousands of shipments coming into all the major retailers in Europe. And, and it, let me tell you that uh, the complete success shipments were less than 0.1%. Oh. There was always a, always an issue, sometimes not, not, not significant. Sometimes the market is very hot and give me whatever you, take, you have, I don't care. But on some other cases, uh, you don't have big catastrophes. The ones that take care, uh, the Matthias takes care of, pretty much. And for that kind of situations is where you have, want to have a buffer. And precisely, you think all these technologies are there in order to try to minimize the, uh, the, 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 the impact of those uh, disasters that normally occur. And um, what I was going with this is that, uh, again, um, if you have a, a, a if you have a shipment of avocados coming from Chile at the start of the campaign, they're they're hard as a stone. You probably are you, you can get away without probably even even temperature control. Oh, what I'm saying, <coughs> truth is they they're stone, they're stone. But then uh, then as as the campaign progresses, uh, you do need control because is is the apple that rotten the rest in the box? Some sort of that principle. And then again, is the, is the the issue with that kind of technology? You, what you are really pushing away uh, with with nitrogen is the other gases, uh, but no, but the, the the fruit, despite that, is going to produce it anyway. And uh, once more, the principle is that you need very little quantities in order to to have problems. And even non characteristic fruit, they do produce. And when they do not produce, it's the mold that is producing. So, in fact, uh, penicillium and botrytis has been proven to produce way more ethylene, for example. Than, than their their host, for example, grapes or in this case pineapples. In fact, uh, who was there? Uh, who was there? Uh, we had uh, the opportunity uh, some months ago to listen to uh, Anna Snowden, and uh, she's a surveyor. Uh, she's probably I don't want to say that loud, but she's probably 70. She has tons of experience, and one of the slides that she showed was. Uh, a slide where they were uh, transporting mandarins in the lower decks of a break ball uh, vessel. And on top of them, bananas. And they were, she was called because of a huge issue there. And she, when, she, when she arrived indeed, bananas were precisely on top of the, of the decks of, of mandarins, the bananas were uh, overrate, uh, overrate and, and even um, um, with a lot of diseases as well. Uh, and basically, after reaching down to the lower decks, they found that, that the, um, the, uh, the mandarins were loaded with penicillium. And it was the ethylene produced by the penicillium which uh, um, uh, overrated the, the, the bananas on top. It was lovely. I, I'm, I'm so sad I could not steal that slide from her, but it, uh, that was the case. So once more, there are many sources. I'm not that worried, if, uh, although you have to take care of them, not that worried about the sources like uh, fossil combustion, or even the mechanism uh, on which these machines work, but mostly how what is produced inside if you don't have a proper ethylene control. Slight different question. You said the uh, peduncle mold was reduced by two twenty percent of what it was before. So yeah, one fifth. Yeah. Is that reduction enough to pay for the solution? Because if it's from 1% to 0.2%, maybe nobody cares. If it's from 10% to 2%, then everybody cares. Well, to, to, in all honesty, I don't know exactly how much a container of pineapples cost. But let's say $20,000. I don't know if to say something, probably it's more. But let's say $20,000. Uh, you are talking about 0.08%. No, less. 0.01% of the cost. So yeah, it's, it's, it's marginal, the cost is marginal. Uh, that said, of course, from the export standpoint, they are playing with little margins, especially with commodities as this one. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it doesn't matter for them to spend a dime if it's not, um, if, if, if it's not adding value. 
But anyway, um, we are convinced that it does have value. It can save the load. And even if you save, save uh, just one box, you are already paid for the treatment. You see? So uh, we believe that the benefits are way, way over the, 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 the cost in this case. Because uh, quick, the lady that you were talking about, I think it was Anna Snow. Is that yes. Yeah, that's the one I'm, I'm referring to. Snow. Hello. <coughs> my name is Lo from China. And uh, my question is uh, besides the, the fruits you mentioned in the presentation, um, any other fruits you, you have tried for the centers, like cherry? Or it, we, we aim for cherries because, uh, especially myself coming from Chile, is a big deal there. And it's, it's a big deal because we export to your country. Yes, yes, yes exactly. So we haven't, we haven't yet get there to, to actually uh, try the benefits. Uh, what I can say is that I do think uh, we definitely want to go there because there are some experiences uh, done by um, some, some Chilean researchers, Sofoli and some others, where they have seen that uh, there's a correlation between the uh, uh, ethanol uh, concentration uh, on loads of a particular uh, uh, of commercial varieties uh, and the incidence of uh, illnesses. And basically, one of the volatiles that we control with CIP, with with uh, Fungi stop is ethanol. So. I, we haven't yet tried, but we are going to go there for sure because it's one, obviously, commercially for all the guys that are, that are here. Obviously, our interest is go where the volume is, but also where the margins allow us to be well, to be welcome. You know, when you go to a commodity that has very little margins, they pretty much don't want to know anything. Uh, so, again, cherries are very uh, interesting because of their value. So yeah. more specifically, uh, do you know the, the temperature they operate in the, the trail? It's, a, it's a very cold or just the room temperature? What, sorry, again? Uh, do you know what's the temperature they, they try the, the centers on carry? No, no, we haven't tried, uh, we haven't tried our technology oh, yet yeah. we are with, uh, with cherries. It's our next step because it's very, yeah. very interesting as, as a species, but we haven't yet there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Is this program to be efficient for marketing food and avocado at the Congo? Well, it, it can. It definitely has a, the power to also um, um, eliminate ethylene. So, uh, apart from other volatiles, uh, again, one one strength is still keeping the the, the same effect that our traditional lines of products have. So, basically, yeah, <coughs> we can use it there. And I can see that perhaps is is interesting in uh, in uh, in controlling. Uh, field diseases like anthracnosis or, or stuff like that that are kind of uh, also big industry headaches. Should we go to some students for results? Well, the, 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 the deal with studies is that what we normally do is that we, we, we research on our own, but then to validate that towards the customers, we try to use an independent and we order independent studies so that they can deliver the answer and that way we can show it because uh, basically nobody Nobody believes you when you when you say that you are so so great and, and you solve everything. So, problem with that is that cost money. For uh, money. So that's why we need to be third party validation. Uh, yeah, so third party validation cost money. So we have to be very careful what species we sh we choose next, unless it, it comes knocking our door. Because sometimes problems come come knocking our at your door and you see the opportunity. Otherwise, we have to select. And since we can tackle. Uh, our case, for example, with our regular line of products, probably that's the thing that is going to prevail. Understand? Uh, basically, I was saying that the regular, the regular, uh, our regular line can tackle our case, for example. So, uh, I'm not sure if we have, we are going to, we have the resources to put into researching how how better could this product treat them, you know? But, but it's, it's, it's valid, it's completely valid.
given the resources. whereby if you're selling to a local country and you're just looking at maybe trying to absorb ethylene during the storage period, which could be a shorter period of time, do you have any experience as to what might be a, a viable short-term period where ethylene <coughs> absorption is valid? I know that's a difficult question to answer, but do you have any experience of that? We do have. Uh, what happens is that normally uh, when it comes to storage, you're normally moving products very quickly, right? Especially on, on, a, on any export situation, pretty much uh, saving some very specific examples. Normally, you, you produce, you pack, and you ship. So the, 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 the warehousing time is quite limited. But what happens is that, especially with, with the species that are highly sensitive, uh, and especially in cases where not only one species pro is processed in that plant, but several, uh, among them some high producers, uh, basically what you have is that the warehouse uh, keeps a, a high concentration of ethylene no matter what. Yeah, you, your fruit stay there very, very little, you move it somewhat quick, but still you put it in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the frying pan, if you wish to call it. So it basically uh, it, it received some, somewhat of a ethylene treatment, if you wish, and then it's moved away. So basically, um, whenever you can, whenever the conditions are suitable, it is of course better to have a, a, a ethylene control. For example, I have customers um, that had issues uh, in, the, in the packing plants because they have neighbors that have fossil combust uh, combustion. For example, I remember one, which is a, a, a key player in the worldwide, and they had a, a neighbor, uh, a drying, drying fruit processing plant. And so they had, they had like, waves of, of ethylene going inside their packing house. Not, not, not necessarily, of course, that as well, but not necessarily their warehouse itself, but their packing facility. And unfortunately, I, I could not provide them with help because we're talking about a major, major volume, so big that actually uh, our, our means of control are not, not longer uh, capable of. So what they do actually is quite simple and clever is that they use big fans in order to move the air as quickly as possible to some other places and, and take it out of the place. But uh, what I was trying to say here is that uh, in warehousing conditions, you have some sort of a, 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 a structural ethylene concentration that you need to get rid of. And in the other cases, you have to do whatever you can in order in bigger, bigger volumes, you have to do whatever you can in order to uh, move that away, hopefully outside, or at least where you can actually control it. Does the ethylene itself have any kind of half-life, which if, if there isn't, if there isn't a, a project that it can attach itself to, is there, a, is there a kind of life cycle to the ethylene by which it will dissipate naturally anyway, or is that always about the airflow in and, and, and what produce is sitting in there and how quickly it's being reproduced? Well, in general, um, all gases, uh, they are going to be oxidized by something else. But if you don't, you don't have any kind of oxidizing source, as uh, potassium permanganate or these other compounds, basically it's going to stay around for as long as nobody oxidizes it. So it, it is a stable element? It's pretty stable. In fact, uh, I, I don't want to go too far ahead with, because I'm not an expert in, in everything related to it, but ethylene can be even explosive. And, and it is controlled in other, you know, better that kind of uh, applications, but in, in industrial applications, sometimes you have to get rid of it uh, because it can be potentially dangerous. So. Thanks. Was there an explosive question here? No? I was just thinking about something else. Uh, air freight, ocean freight. Is there a point where using your solution can tip the difference between 
ocean freight and air freight. Air freight being more expensive. So well, therefore you can get away with ocean freight. Well, no. Oh, I'm to offer air freight. Well, that is not exclusive of our technology. I mean, all yeah. these efforts in terms of having a better, a better um, culture management, even from field, uh, having better field um, um, uh, processes and, and, and having a, a, a fruit coming with a better condition from field, then all the post-harvest handling done in, in a better condition and, and having a, a, a proper culture, yes. basically that's, that's, how, what, that's why everybody is trying to uh, move away from, from air, air freight and, and moving everything by, by, by sea freight because it's yeah. way cheaper. Now, of course, uh, they also react to market conditions and they are still going to cheat by airplane oh, yeah, because sure. if, yeah. the, if, the, if the goods pay, well, let's, let's arrive first. But uh, that's with many products. Uh, for example, blueberries. Blueberries not long ago, two years ago, three years ago, they were almost exclusively cheap by airplane because they were so sensitive and nobody had really uh, control of everything. Uh, nowadays, you see that it's totally the opposite. I mean, everybody tries to go by by sea freight, but because of the uh, savings, pretty much. But instead, what we've got this is basically the drivers. You mentioned the answer my first question is that this this demand, increasing demand for tree ripened X Y Z, whether it's fruit or whatever. In other words, to cap that sugar content right to the end, so the consumer, the consumer will demand this more and more. Mm -hmm. So that actually takes you back to actually what. Uh, um, Paco said uh, earlier on, so in other words, we spend a lot of money on production, actually well, we should be spending more money <laughs> on, on uh, pre preservation doing the, doing the supply chain and that might possibly also control costs and price because all we do, we actually reduce the oversupply which is, which is this ballooning problem of waste uh, now even the supermarkets are now, for example in France, I know, but also in England, they're now under pressure to give uh, the food away to food banks. Right. In the past, it was actually, I would almost say, I mean, there's, I know there's no retailer in the, in the audience here, but say that waste was a business applied by the retailers to screw the producers. In other words, to use that element. So, so these are all the challenges that we are faced with. I don't know if there are any more questions in the audience because I just it's just an idea which I had, but it looks to me like I'm to, I tried to explain this this ethylene control the very simple because it's just like a, it's like anti-aging cream <laughs> yeah, exactly in a way because short of the fact that we cannot sell the elixir of youth. And that's between these two. That's what you guys do. Is that right? That summarizes more or less. Kind of. Good. Uh, if there are no more questions, I don't know what's happening now because originally we had uh, Niccolo, who obviously is uh, not with us today. Uh, I believe uh, Miriam told me that we are. Max is going to do Are you? Are you going to do? Well, you thank you, guys. Sorry. Thank you.